All right, we're pretty much doing the same thing that we did yesterday. The markets are mostly under sell pressure. If you go into the S&P 500, you see Tesla's not doing too good today. Apple's pulled back. It's more flat. But we also see that there is still that rotation over to healthcare. Eli Lilly is having another positive day. J&J &J is looking pretty good. Healthcare and energy, it's where Wall Street is rotating into right now. Yesterday, I identified weakness in my top two biggest trades, which are Apple and Tesla right now. And so I raised my stop loss, and this morning, it kicked me out of both. I'm going to give you guys some fresh technicals. Now, I could have gone with a lower stop loss because largely, I believe we're going to see a reversal here very soon, but I allowed it to kick me out. I run the risk of over trading, but let me give you guys my new trade range that I'm looking to get into and out of of both. Apple and Tesla. We'll start off with Apple. So right now I think that we're looking for a buy target of 174 to 175. The chart was looking weak. The momentum to the downside is slowing but I'm still expecting some kind of a capitulation moment that would cause us to then begin to go up with more force. What I noticed yesterday is that the market seemed to lack any conviction to continue to go up. They still had hesitancy and wanted to come down a little bit more. So once we get back into Apple at around 174, 175, our target will then be the same 183, 184 target. And then on Tesla, now I'm gonna break it down a little bit differently for Tesla. Tesla is way more volatile than Apple. That gives us more opportunities. And over the last couple days, we saw that it kinda gave us a double bottom at $242. But again, the market is kinda not telling me it's ready to go up just yet, nor any of these big tech stocks are ready to bounce. The rotation over to healthcare and energy is continuing. So here's what we've gotta watch out for Tesla. If we come back and break that 242, that's actually not that big of a deal. But if we come back and we close below 239, then we have a strong confirmation that we're going to go all the way back to 211 on this move, which could be great news for some of you guys who've been wanting to load up and buy more Tesla at a much better price. There could be that opportunity coming up. The markets are moving very, very quickly. So, But here's the specific trade for Tesla that I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be looking for 239 to hold. I'm going to be looking for a bounce off of 239 up to 264. I do believe that we're gonna see some ebb and flow in these markets. They're not just gonna go straight down. We're gonna get to a place where they're oversold. We're over 20% on Tesla and we'll get at least a test to the top of the range. So I'm seeing that as a bounce at 239 all the way up to 264. But it wouldn't surprise me that after that, that we could still come back, break through 239 and see that $211 price over the next couple months. Now, today I've got a great show for you guys. I'm going to be going into a stock that could have some major movement to the upside. It's not like the Magnificent Seven. It's actually been getting beat down for the last six months, and it could be at a place of reversal. I'm going to go over that stock in detail in just a minute, and they're reporting earnings tonight. I'm also going to recap on my earnings calls from yesterday on Rivian, Mara, and Sound. I'm going to briefly give you guys my reaction to how the price action reacted to the earnings call calls yesterday and what I think will happen in the next couple days on all of three of those. And then we're going to get into our big play. This is the Stocks with Josh show. Thank you always for hitting the like for me. Throw a heart, say hi in the comment. Hit the subscribe button to get these daily stock and crypto predictions. Okay, let's just talk real quick about Rivian. Rivian, guys, the 50 MA and the strongest support that Rivian has right now is at $20.50. And so it seems that the direction has largely been confirmed and that we will come back and touch that price. All right, and then we've got Mara. Mara is going to be more volatile. We know that the price action is tied to Bitcoin. We did see some movement on earnings. Basically, I gave you guys the range that it would be between $16.80 and the $13.80 range. We saw it vacillate up to $16.42, and we've come back to around $15.75. So really, it was a nothing burger. It's largely remained flat. And again, if Bitcoin if it remains flat, Mara will come down. I'm still looking for a better price entry on Mara. I'd love to see it between $12, $13, or $14. Then we've got SoundHound. SoundHound reported yesterday, and we saw a nice 20% pop up in the price. But let me give you guys some fresh technicals on Sound today. So we saw some selling pressure in the market today, and here's what we're going to be watching for. We want to see it ultimately come back up and backtest the 200-day moving average, which the price had recently fallen beneath. And so we want to see it come back up and backtest that and break above it. 
Currently, that price would be around $2.48. So we want to see it get up above the 200-day moving average. That's the only way we're going to have a confirmation that this is going to go higher right now, and it's not going to continue to have some trouble. We don't want to see it just pop up to 248, get rejected, then come back and make a new local low. That would be bearish. So we've got our eyes on sound. If you want to get updates from me on sound, I'm not going to cover it every day. Remember what I said, small cap, small position size. A lot of you guys locked in some profits off of that nice 20% pop off of the prediction that it would get below $2 and a ton of you made some money. If you're long sound, then you're going to have to find me over in the Moomoo Moo chat group where I do talk about it and give fresh technicals. Okay, I briefly wanted to talk about the bearishness or the bullishness of the market. I've been talking about the fact that we have what I'm calling the pain trade ahead of us. The pain trade ahead of us is that inflation remains sticky and going into the second half of this year, it continues to go up and as a result, the Fed continues to raise interest rates and that we're not stuck at five and a quarter and five and a half, but instead he pushes us all the way up to a 6% Fed funds rate because Wall Street has been pricing in the Fed funds rate coming down to 3% and that would be a shock and it would result in even a larger sell-off. We don't know that we have that. That's not confirmed. You don't want to get too bearish too quickly, but I do want to keep the pain trade on your guys' mental horizon so you're aware that it could happen. The bull scenario actually is the idea that this is simply a correction, a 10% correction off of a six-month run-up that the bull market has largely been confirmed. And let's just look at what one of the Feds said yesterday. Fed Harker said, absent any alarming new data between now and mid-September, we simply have to be patient, hold the rates where they're at, and let them work. Exactly what Fed Jerome Powell said, which is that it's a patience game right now. It's all going to be about data moving forward, and we're going to try to let the current Fed funds rate do its job. So the next CPI report is going to be a big one. I think that on stocks like Apple and Tesla, we're going to come down between now and then halfway to the next CPI report, we're probably going to go back up and get right underneath the ranges that I gave you guys. And then if that CPI report comes out bad, then we'll drop some more. But if it comes out good, we may pop above those ranges I just gave you. All right, I'm going to be getting into Disney. I'm going to be talking about some of the recent action around Disney, some significant Disney news, what's been going on with this stock. You guys know that I recently covered it, and I talked about the fact that this could be one of the next stocks that could move up 100%. It has been getting beat down for the last six months, and so it could be coming to its lows and it could be facing a reversal and a much bigger move up today's earnings. And I'm going to let you know in this video what the big picture is, what the micro picture is, and what those charts tell me. Before I get into all of that, let me do a quick station break for the Webull investment app. Right now, Webull is now available in the United Kingdom, which is brand new. They've never been available there before. And if you're in the United Kingdom and you're following this page, you can click on the link in the top pinned comment and you can open up a Webull account where you can get up to 12 fractional shares for simply opening and putting a single penny into your account. Now, today I'm talking about Disney, which is a kind of a more pricey stock, even though it's come way off of its highs, it's still a little bit pricey. And if you wanted to buy $10 of Disney every single day or even $20 once a week, you could do that with Webull. You can do that with their fractional shares. So you don't have to buy the entire Disney stock. You can just buy $20 worth of it on a set schedule. You can do that on the Webull app. You can now do that in the UK. Click on the link in the top pinned comment. Check out the offer for yourself. Get those free fractional shares. Start doing some micro stock daily investing. All right, we know that 2023 has not been kind to Disney. We know that they've lost a billion dollars at the box office. The park business is dead after the recently replaced CEO had gone on a multi-year relentless price hiking campaign, pricing Disney beyond the reach of many working class and middle class families. Disney Plus Business, promoting controversial, non-family friendly content, has been bleeding subscribers, and most reports show that they were struggling to maintain critical talent and partnerships at their ESPN business, which had once been very profitable. Bob Iger was brought back to make sense of it all, and Wall Street's been trying to guess what his big strategic plan to bring Disney back from the brink is going to be. With yesterday's breaking news, it appears that part of the plan is to make ESPN a direct to consumer platform, which he has been saying. The challenge though is that they would have to charge $30 a month for that subscription, just to break even. And the question is, are their customers loyal enough to absorb that expense? 
Well, based on a recent poll, only 10% of the average customer was willing to pay that kind of a price, while 30% said that they had no interest at paying any price for the subscription. If you look at the model of successful subscription content providers, the prices basically range from $7 to $20 max. And remember, ESPN is an expensive business to operate, and one of the reasons that Disney stock has been down in the gutter. These guys have to be at a $30 a month subscription to even break even. So Disney had to come up with a gamble. They had to come up with a new plan. And so they're going Vegas style. I want you guys to check out this video to see the breaking news on Disney stock. This story is crazy. ESPN is creating a sports book called ESPN Bet exclusively for audiences in the United States. What's insane about this is that ESPN's licensing agreement with Penn Entertainment to create the sports betting platform is worth over $2 billion. Penn Entertainment agreed to pay ESPN $1.5 billion in cash over 10 years, in addition to giving ESPN $500 million of warrants to purchase approximately 31.8 million common shares of Penn Entertainment. This fall, Barstool Sportsbook will effectively be rebranded into ESPN Bet. Does ESPN Bet have the potential to become one of the most popular sportsbooks? Or is this ESPN just trying to get their cut of the sports betting gold rush? Since ESPN is owned by Disney, does this mean that Mickey Mouse likes laying down greasy parlays as much as everyone else? Based on this new partnership, Penn stock, P-E-N-N, -N, gained 20%, while it sent shutters through the DraftKings shareholders, causing that stock to drop 9%, and Disney remained largely flat. Maybe gambling is the way to go. With this new Vegas approach, more Disney assets could possibly be changing and going that direction, and maybe even the Disney slogan might go from happiest place on earth to what happens at Disney stays at Disney. Who knows? Other opportunities that Iger's been pursuing, we know, have been over at Apple. During the Apple Worldwide Development Conference in June, he was looking for a partnership deal between Apple's recently announced VR headset, which he specifically said lends itself to sports. Apple could solve all of Disney's problems. These guys have distribution locked down, especially with new tech coming on the scene, and they've got all the money in the world to do whatever they want, but what they don't want is to take the risk of aligning with a company who's got bad mojo right now, a company in disrepair that doesn't really seem like Apple's style, so we're still waiting to see what opportunity could arise there. All of this sounds like a monumental mess, but it's begun to turn me a little bit bullish. The charts are beat down and it's pretty rare. We don't always get a chance to buy Disney over 50% off. So this is a unique situation. And what we've got to determine is how close are we to the bottom? Are we going lower from here? Because remember, we compared this recently to Meta stock. And I'm gonna briefly give you guys some fresh technicals on Meta at the end of this video. But look at how Meta got beat down. Wall Street seemed to hate it, driving the price all the way down into the gutter. But once some things were reorganized and put back in place, then you know what? It skyrocketed from $100 well above $300. And so the big question of today, is that same thing possible with Disney? Because Disney has a ton of assets. It's a beloved American company that has lost its way. But if things begin to get fixed, and if it comes under new management, we could end up in a situation very similar to Meta. And this could be a buying opportunity. So this is one of those stocks where the chart is so bad, it's starting to look good. All right, let's dive into the technicals to get a little bit of a better view of of where the buy price is. Now, if we go all the way back into history and we look from 2014 all the way to the present, twice before Disney came down and it got right beneath $80, it came down to around $79 and it bounced. And so the big question is, have we gotten this close to that critical level of support only to begin to move back up? Or is it possible that we are still yet to dip beneath that $80 mark and then get a reversal. In my mind, I'm calling accumulation to begin at $80. Now I'm gonna give you guys some critical areas of support where this stock could go, because you need to be aware of where is the risk to the downside, even getting in at this favorable $80 price, how much risk is there to the downside and how much opportunity is there to the upside, and when could we expect that reversal? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, looking at this chart, Wall Street does not see the plan that Bob Iger has. And so they're not piling into this. So if we got in now, if we got in today, we'd be getting in early. 
I do think though that we will eventually get beneath that $80. And if we did, if we hit that $80, that would be a bounce off the 200 day moving average. If you guys understand some of the basics of technical trading, for this thing to come back and hit the 200 day moving average makes a ton of sense. And it would make no sense for us to get this close and not come down and touch it. I would say it's charting destiny for Disney to come down and hit that 200 day moving average. This is a stock where it would be reasonably safe to buy a put until we get there. Now, here's where it could go if it didn't bounce off that 200 day moving average. I am largely expecting some sort of action at that 200 day moving average, but we could break down to the 350 day moving average, which is pretty rare. It recently happened back in 2009. We saw that it came all the way down to the 350 MA. Now, if we did that again, then the stock price would be $60. And so if you began to take a position at 80, there could be a risk that it could come back all the way to 60. I'm gonna call 80 to 60 a strong accumulation zone for Disney stock. Because ultimately, I believe that this thing will be $120 before the end of this year is up, and I believe that going into the next couple years, we will be back to $160 Disney. A couple other critical technicals that you need to lay your eyes on before you invest in a stock like this, it's the MACD. We're gonna look at it with the monthly chart, which means that each and every candle represents a month in the market, and we're looking at a historic view showing us a couple years. We are not at the point where we've gotten that crossover buy signal from the MACD, but you can see that we're getting very, very close. And when it does cross over, then that means that there's way more opportunity to the upside. Right now, it is definitely showing that it's significantly oversold. And then you've got the RSI, which we have to acknowledge that when it's in bear territory, it often stays in bear territory. It's not oversold yet on the monthly time frame. But if we go over to the weekly time frame, we're actually seeing some strong bullish divergence. So there is some room for it to come down, but we're starting to see bullish divergence on the weekly RSI, which means that we could be getting very, very close to the absolute bottom for Disney. I also want you guys to look at the Gaussian channel and you see that it's gone from green to red. Often within a couple months after making that transition on the monthly chart, no more than three months, the very bottom of Disney has been achieved. And so if we go back in time, we see that it was only three months after it flipped color that we have actually then gone on to a much bigger run up where the stock has moved 100%, which is why I have called this the next stock to move 100%. And you can see that we've already spent two months after this color switch. And so we are now looking at the 30 day window before the potential bottom is achieved based on the Gaussian channel pattern history. All right, so in conclusion, guys, Disney stock requires patience because we're very close to the bottom, but we're not quite there just yet. You could short this stock or buy some puts on it. And once we got beneath $80, you could close your position and consider going long. I'm going to be going long with shares. I will not get into call options until I see a definitive reversal in price. And remember how Wall Street rallied behind Meta after they forgave Mark Zuckerberg for losing his way trying to take Facebook into the metaverse, wasting and spending money. It's no different than what's happened with Disney right now. As soon as they begin to show their plan for reorganization and change, Wall Street absolutely will forgive this stock. And just like we saw with Meta, it went from $84 to a near rocket ship path, a 45 degree angle parallel channel all the way from $84 to $300. An incredible move. That chart looks better still than the Apple chart. And you guys know how sexy I think the Apple chart is. All right, but let me just take a quick moment and give you guys a flash technical for Meta. I promised it to you guys at the end of this video. I want to point out that Meta's got room to come down. We saw Apple, Tesla, a lot of the Magnificent Seven are coming down. I think Meta's going to come down too. Why do I think that? Because we've got bearish divergence on the daily RSI chart telling us that the momentum higher is not the same as it was over the last 30 days. It means the stock is cooling off and we could expect some more room to the downside. Yes, Meta, there isn't a short opportunity here right now on Meta. I think it's gonna cool off. Now, Meta could easily even come back to $256. We're just gonna have to watch that and see if it's another Stocks with Josh prediction that comes to pass. All right, guys, that wraps us up today. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be covering Alibaba and some other Chinese stocks, but specifically, we're gonna be covering Baba before going into earnings. We've got some critical news for Alibaba and the Chinese stocks that we have to look at. I'm gonna be covering Alibaba tomorrow and some other Chinese plays. Don't miss that video. Again, thank you guys for the likes. If you like this video and you like getting this kind of daily, 
uh, insight into stock and crypto plays, then hit that subscribe button and that YouTube all notification bell. As always, peace and blessings. We'll see you in the Moomoo chat.